Good morning, everyone. Josh is Severe Weather. Welcome to my channel. We have got again and again and again severe weather, and this is just getting old very quickly uh, across the central and eastern United States. It was busy Monday. Some of the same places are going to be under the gun again today, and I'm going to get right to it. So I'm going to share my screen with you here and talk about the next complex of storms roaring through Kansas and Oklahoma this morning. Uh, we now have an enhanced risk where widespread wind damage is expected across the Ozarks region of Missouri, northern Arkansas, uh, downstate Illinois, western and middle Kentucky and Tennessee, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama. And that threat's likely to continue into Georgia tonight and into the Carolinas during the day tomorrow. Uh, there will be a potential for a few tornadoes, but overall we're looking at destructive winds, wind gusts perhaps to hurricane force again and the onslaught just continues we've got a very active jet stream uh bringing strong upper level disturbances across the northern part of the united states where the lineup of the heat to the south and the cooler more stable air to the north is where that line demarcates those two areas is where we're seeing this onslaught and this is going to be continuing to be a problem uh monday we had uh over 1300 reports of severe weather you don't need to clean your ears out. That's correct. Over 1,300 reports of severe weather. Now, this was not as destructive a day when it comes to tornadoes like we saw on March 31st, but there were at least eight tornadoes. I'm, I'm seeing reports now maybe of even over 10 tornadoes, some in the Carolinas and Kentucky and Tennessee, but the strongest tornadoes we've seen in nine years in parts of New York State, not to mention it looks like a derecho here that came through the Mason-Dixon line area and a large area of severe wind. Now, yesterday was not as busy, but... Uh, in fact, I thought things were going to get going a little bit quicker here in Mississippi and Alabama. That turned out not to be the case, but you can see 16 reported tornadoes, some in eastern Colorado and some on Cape Cod, and a large area of wind damage over southeastern Alabama and especially southern Georgia and even South Carolina. So that is going to be nothing compared to what we're looking at today. We do have heat advisories and excessive heat warnings over much of the Gulf states. Heat indices 115 to 120 in parts of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Florida. Just ridiculous. We do have a severe thunderstorm watch, which is probably expiring now over Kansas, but storms are gonna continue into Oklahoma a little bit weaker at this point. And you can see that on our water vapor image. This is a very intense cyclone here, moving through the Cheyenne, Wyoming area. Out ahead of it, we've got a complex of storms that is likely going to continue on its tear this morning over Eastern Kansas and Oklahoma, then spreading into Missouri and Arkansas by this afternoon and then into the Tennessee Valley late in the day today. And you can see there's a northern piece of this feature as well, which is aimed at Illinois and Indiana and Kentucky. So while the worst I do think stays south of those areas, we could still have some severe weather even in the St. Louis area. This is all gonna head eastward into the Carolinas tomorrow where I do think there's still gonna be a threat for severe weather. And behind it, more instability coming through the northern part of our jet stream, the Dakotas into the upper Midwest, are going to see more active weather over the second part of this week. We do have an enhanced risk for severe weather today with almost 7 million Americans at risk for enhanced severe weather. That includes Memphis, Nashville, Springfield, Clarksville, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and a slight risk for places like Tulsa, St. Louis, Birmingham, Little Rock, Huntsville, Alabama, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and Evansville, Indiana. In that area, we do have a 5% chance for some tornadoes, a 30% chance for severe wind, and a 15% chance for hail. We're also going to keep an eye on the upper Midwest for the threat for some severe weather as well. Tomorrow, that threat for severe weather shifts east and takes aim at the Carolinas and maybe Georgia as well in southern Virginia, uh, where we do have 10 million Americans right now in a slight risk. We have a marginal risk as well over southern New England. We have a marginal risk over parts of the Deep South and a marginal risk over the upper Midwest, the upper Missouri and Red River Valleys. As we get into the day on Friday, that area is the area to watch now, and we now see Chicago, Milwaukee, Peoria, and eastern Iowa with over 10 million Americans at least in a slight risk for the time being. And that is going to be the area that I'm watching beyond that as we, uh, I'll come back to that in just a second, as we get to Saturday right now, we still could have some severe weather in the Great Lakes, but the area of drawn out of greatest concern is actually back across Nebraska, Iowa, and northern parts of Missouri, and southeastern parts of South Dakota, and that area could grow, could even get into Illinois here at night. So Sunday could be a very busy day, and we are seeing kind of a repeat pattern, the same areas in here. I talked about this, it's going to be in August to remember, but we are going to continue to have threats for severe weather. Here's a zoomed in version of our areas to watch, and I'm going to pull up a few graphics for you all to see today where 
uh, we've got this risk for tornadoes. It includes eastern parts of Oklahoma, southern Missouri, southwest Kentucky, western Tennessee, and even clipping the northern part of Mississippi. Not quite to Little Rock in Arkansas, but Jonesboro, Harrisonville, and Bentonville are in that area of 5% tornado risk. And we do have a 2% risk for a few tornadoes. It's not a large chance, but it is a chance nonetheless. Uh, so if you're in Middle Tennessee, northern Alabama, northwest Georgia, western and central Kentucky, even downstate Indiana and Illinois, you need to be on the lookout here for this potential for some tornadoes. Uh, better risk for extreme wind. And these, right now we don't have a hatched area, but I do think we'll see wind gusts over 70 miles per hour, perhaps as high as 80 miles per hour across this region. Uh, so definitely going to be a dangerous morning in Missouri and then a dangerous afternoon across uh, the Mississippi River Valley into the Tennessee Valley. Maybe a second wave coming in behind it. I'll show you that in just a second. And we do have a 15% chance for severe hail. Here's the reasoning why. If you look at the GFS mid-level winds, you can see this disturbance that we have here in Wyoming this morning is going to intensify as it moves out onto the plains here later this morning. And you can see winds aloft starting to pick up over Missouri. 50 to 60 knot winds up at 700 millibars. And these winds continue to intensify by the time this system moves into Western Kentucky, Western Tennessee and Northern Arkansas, maybe 70 knot winds uh, by seven o'clock central tonight. That area is going to maintain itself as it moves south and eastward or east southeastward uh, towards the Southern Appalachians. Look at these winds aloft overnight tonight, perhaps as high as 75 knots. And then this will maintain itself as it moves right along the Carolina border. So Southern North Carolina, Northern South Carolina, will see this intense wind moving through here in the mid-levels here tomorrow morning, uh, followed by some remaining instability in the afternoon. So this is why we've got potentially two waves of severe weather tomorrow. Looking up north, we do have another strong upper level feature moving through the prairies of Canada. And you can see those fast winds start spreading eastward here kind of a, an undulation here across Minnesota here later tomorrow night. And that is going to continue into Iowa, Southern Wisconsin, Northern Illinois, and follow with another one. So kind of a one-two punch here coming later this week. I'd love to get into detail on that. I will tell you this, these kind of complexes are very difficult to predict. They do change some timing changes. Rain can sometimes make things more stable in the longer term. So I'm not gonna be able to show you a lot of detail that's gonna be super accurate, but just know that the upper level pattern is favorable to see us with more severe weather. Um, I'm going to look at the NAM model today. The HER has not done as well as the NAM, at least not as of late. I mean, I could show you models all day, but I'll just tell you these are just forecasts and they could potentially change, but at least you're going to get an idea of time frame. And the Northeast looks great today. Uh, we could see a few pop ups so back across Pennsylvania. I don't think we'll see anything severe at this point today, but as we get on into tomorrow and into Friday, we're going to see a busier stretch of weather again in the Northeast. Uh, probably not widespread severe weather, but definitely heavy rainfall around Philly and New York tomorrow afternoon, upstate New York as well, and right along the Canadian border. As we get to tomorrow night, though, Long Island, Connecticut, southern New England could get hammered with localized severe weather and very heavy rain, maybe a couple of inches falling here. And a lot of that's going to be tomorrow evening across the northeast, even continuing into the overnight across parts of Maine and eastern New Hampshire. That's going to move out of here by Friday, though, and so it's mainly a tomorrow night thing. And uh, we should see some quieter weather on Friday. Now back to the West, this is the area we're gonna be most concerned with. You can see rain and storms in Kansas this morning moving into Missouri and uh, maybe some severe weather in Southern parts of Missouri and Northern Arkansas. We've got fast wind flow aloft. And after this first wave moves through, behind it is where I'm really concerned. So this is about six o'clock central. You can see things are activating quickly here over Southwestern Missouri. These will move very quickly through the Ozarks tonight. And tonight, later on especially, we could see a couple of different modes of severe weather, one across downstate Illinois, the other moving into western Tennessee. Still some uncertainty on exact timing, but you can see this area is certainly in a spot where we could have favorable conditions for severe winds and certainly hail and a few tornadoes, especially if you have discrete cells like this. We do have that threat for tornadoes. Everything is going to move east and mostly out of the region tomorrow. Some lingering rain and storms over the lower Tennessee Valley tomorrow morning. And then it uh, looks like uh, we may have to keep an eye on some things here across um, the mid-Ohio Valley into West Virginia tomorrow afternoon, moving through the Appalachians here in East Tennessee late in the day. I think most of the severe weather is going to be tonight and early tomorrow, though. Um, after this moves through, we do see some quieter weather until we get into Friday, and then we start seeing some action up around the Great Lakes. More to come on that soon. Here's a look at the southeast, and uh, we have our one big complex that hit Georgia that is off the coast and not a threat at this point. 
Here comes the next one, though, this afternoon. Northern Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee could see locally some tornadoes in here. You can see there's some rotation uh, and some updraft felicity, which can lead to some stronger downdrafts as well. This is going to be about 8 o'clock tonight, Central. And you can see moving into northwest Georgia around midnight Eastern. And then behind that, additional storms tonight over the same areas. And uh, we may have some nighttime damaging storms to deal with. Tomorrow, uh, things are going to spread eastward, and we'll have a morning wave moving through the Charlotte area in the morning tomorrow, then heading towards Raleigh around lunchtime, then at the coast in the afternoon. We have to watch that, but then we may have another area to keep an eye on behind it later in the day between 5 and 8 o'clock, tracking through Raleigh and Fayetteville and Benson and Lillington, and then spreading east towards Mount Olive, maybe towards Newburn and Greenville here towards the evening. So keep an eye on that, and the tailing end of it could hit South Carolina as well later in the evening. Again, this is just one model run of the NAM. I could show you models all day. They're all differ, uh, but just know that this area is under the gun. So let's take a look at some more specific timing here for today. And you can see storms moving into Missouri this morning from Kansas. And uh, the most intense of those will be down around the Springfield and Rolla area here towards lunchtime and then moving east towards the boot heel later in the day. More storms firing up along 44 around Joplin, heading towards Springfield and then down towards Mountain Home this evening. And uh, we do have to watch these. We also have to keep an eye on stuff that could form farther up 44 towards the St. Louis area this evening uh, between about 8 and 10 o'clock. And then that moves east into downstate Illinois before midnight. We do have quieter weather expected here behind this. Tomorrow should be a dry day as we start warming back up. Maybe some pop-ups as we head into Friday across northern Missouri. Down across Arkansas, we are definitely going to be have to watch for severe wind and certainly a few tornadoes as well. Um, looks like this morning wave is not going to be quite as intense as what's coming through this evening. Um, you can see east of Rogers, between Rogers and Mountain Home, around 7, 8 o'clock tonight, a few tornadoes will be possible along with damaging winds and large hail. These continue to track eastward towards Jonesboro later in the evening, then towards the Memphis area towards midnight or so, and then move away at that point. Uh, we will see a few lingering showers south and east of 40 here when we get into the afternoon tomorrow. Uh, should be quiet, though, as we head towards Thursday night for the most part, then a few showers across the south on Friday. Uh, we are definitely going to have to watch the Tennessee Valley here as well as the Ohio River Valley. Um, so far, so good this morning, but later on today, here comes the first wave moving through southern Illinois, and it is showing like looking like it's going to try to strengthen when it gets into Tennessee near the I-40 corridor here this evening between 7 and 9. Keep an eye on things between Nashville and Huntsville and maybe even Chattanooga here later this evening. But the next wave certainly is of concern as well. Illinois, Indiana, maybe even Ohio, and then moving into Kentucky overnight tonight. Louisville, Elizabethtown, and Bowling Green potentially under the gun here after midnight tonight. Then even Lexington, uh, Cookville, and even East Tennessee overnight tonight, uh, right up the I-75 corridor, and also heading up the I-81 corridor towards um, Morristown, Johnson City, Bristol, uh, keep an eye on those storms overnight tonight. I know my friend Jesse uh, Sacker, Storm Tracker, will be keeping an eye on those early in the day tomorrow. And then we'll have some more rain and storms, but these should not be as intense during the afternoon tomorrow, it looks like, over East Tennessee. So uh, mainly overnight is the area of uh, the uh, time frame we're going to be watching for. Uh, pretty quiet across the Carolinas and Virginia today. I don't think we're going to see anything of major concern, maybe a few pop-ups coming out of the mountains. Overnight tonight, just a few leftover showers. But the area to watch moves into the picture here tomorrow morning, early in the day. Uh, anywhere from upstate South Carolina into West Virginia in the morning, we could have some rough weather. And I would be a little bit concerned about uh, the potential for some locally strong winds and even some rotation in the Charlotte area. You can see there is wind shear with south to southeast wind flow in the lower levels and then going the southwest. And this is in the morning, so at 9 a.m. around the Lake Norman region and just west towards the foothills, um, again, just like we saw on Monday, the threat for a few embedded tornadoes in this area starting very early in the day from Gaffney and Blacksburg up to about Hickory and Shelby, Lincolnton area, and then spreading east towards the I-75 corridor in that 8 to 9 a.m. window. Let me see if I can zoom that for you here. Here's 8, 9, 10 a.m., 11, and even lunchtime. Keep an eye on the Raleigh and Fayetteville areas around lunchtime and then over eastern North Carolina in the afternoon. But I wish that was it. And then we've got another wave expected to form. You can see some intense storms over the central part of uh, North Carolina, starting around the Sand Hills here about four or five o'clock and the Uari, and then heading towards Raleigh and um, towards Clayton around six o'clock, 
and then heading towards Greenville around 7, 8 o'clock, Jacksonville and New Bern, 9, 10 o'clock. These storms could be pretty powerful. Also keep an eye on things across southern and eastern Virginia in the evening from around Richmond straight down 64 through Williamsburg all the way to the uh, Hampton Roads and Virginia Beach regions. Should be quieter as we get to the overnight hours. Friday looks to be a better day, but certainly very active up until then. Uh, farther south, let's keep let's keep at it here in the Carolinas and southeast. Quiet weather today. Tonight, storms move into northwest Georgia. They could be pretty intense around Rome and maybe getting close to Atlanta here overnight tonight, 3 and 4 in the morning. These continue to shift eastward into the upstate of South Carolina tomorrow morning. Uh, we will maybe see a few storms around Myrtle Beach around lunchtime, but overall a quiet day tomorrow until we get to the evening hours. And we have to keep an eye on things south and east of 85 and approaching the I-20 corridor here in the evening hours uh, into the PD area even overnight. So keep an eye on these storms. Right now they don't look like a lot on the NAM, but there may be enough instability left over and a little bit of wind shear where we could see some damaging winds and even a tornado or two in the nighttime hours. It should quiet down behind this system on Friday. And finally, let's take a look here at the Dixie region where it continues to be a hot one here. Uh, we are seeing showers and storms um, affecting Alabama, northern Mississippi later today. And then tonight, stretching across northeast Alabama, we could see wind damage in this area along the I-59 corridor and then into overnight into northwestern Georgia. Here comes the next wave over northern Mississippi and northwest Alabama overnight tonight and maybe affecting the Birmingham and Huntsville areas tomorrow morning between 6 and 9 a.m. Central. Uh, so you can see where the active storm track is, kind of the same place as it's been over the last week or so. Eventually, we get a push southward here late in the day tomorrow, and then tomorrow night, things are shifting into central parts of Alabama and Georgia. And we may have more storms in this area on Friday to keep an eye on, especially when you get down to about Interstate 20 and on southward. So here's a look at the uh, maximum updraft helicity, and this shows where rotating storms could occur and certainly intense wind drafts could occur downdrafts could occur and you can see kind of two distinct areas one from Oklahoma and southern Missouri down into western Tennessee and northern Alabama the other uh, taking shape over central and eastern Missouri and then heading into the Ohio River area so these are the areas we're going to have to watch um, if this model is correct as we move farther east in time you can see northwest Georgia here tonight is under the gun tomorrow we're keeping an eye on east Tennessee and then definitely an uptick here in activity around the Charlotte and Concord areas and then heading east in the afternoon. Uh, and then a second area to watch starting off here near uh, Albemarle and Ashboro, heading to the east uh, and maybe affecting Sanford and then over towards Mount Olive. And look at this. I don't know if this is gonna be right, but it shows very impressive storms here in the evening tomorrow over eastern parts of North Carolina. Also some storms to keep an eye on in Virginia, by the way. Uh, accumulating wind gusts could be pretty intense out of this complex. You can kind of look at the yellows and the oranges to see where our strongest wind gusts are expected kind of two areas one right in here and then one up in here <clears throat> these spread east into the carolinas and here you can see more intense storms expected across north carolina tomorrow afternoon evening where that slight risk is in effect uh, looking at the shorter term we can see on the her model things are going to start getting active in arkansas and then towards uh, the memphis area here this afternoon then spreading right along the southern border with tennessee and northern alabama here tonight and here's wave number two coming through southern parts of Missouri on the Her model. The NAM was a little farther north, the Her a little farther south. Either way, prepare for the worst if you're in this region. Here's a look farther east, and you can see that area on the Her that really gets active across um, parts of northern Alabama here. This is about 530 central, and then this is up to about 730, and then moving into northwest Georgia between 9 and 10 o'clock tonight, eastern time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And finally... Across the Carolinas, we are even seeing on the HER that uh, these strong winds will affect East Tennessee late tonight and then move into Western North Carolina, Northeast Georgia, and upstate South Carolina before daybreak tomorrow, and then move all the way into Eastern North Carolina. So the NAM a little farther north than the HER, but either way, they have the kind of the same area that's going to be under the gun here tonight in this area and tomorrow across the Carolinas. So very active weather expected. Tropics are quiet in the Atlantic. Enjoy it while we can. I think late August and especially September are going to get very busy with all that warm temperature. Uh, we just have too much wind shear right now to get anything to go, but you can see we have some minor features just to keep an eye on at this point. Um, again, as we shift phases from active in the Pacific to active in the Atlantic, this can change on a dime, but I still think we're about three weeks away from seeing that occurring. You can see we're pretty quiet here, even in the central Atlantic, nothing of major concern. 
Eastern Atlantic. Yeah, we've got some waves, but we've got a ton of dry air and some wind shear from the west in the way here. So nothing should develop. And if you see the euro other than a, a non-tropical system up here, no threats for anything tropical over the next 10 to 14 days. In the Pacific, this is Dora the Explorer, Category 3 hurricane, still very intense, well south and west of Hawaii, moving west in the slightly cooler water, and we will see a weakening trend getting down to Category 2 strength by tomorrow night, Category 1 by Friday, and Tropical Storm by Sunday evening. Again, no threat to land. The bigger concern I've got is Japan and Korea. We've got a couple of storms that we're tracking. Kanun, we've been watching for two weeks. Finally starting to show some signs of organization, but will run out of land as it moves east of Jeju, south and west of Busan. Here's the forecast track from Zoom Earth, and you can see it's going to be making landfall in South Korea here in about 24 hours. Uh, we may see a minimal typhoon, but certainly a big rainmaker, a lot of wind with this, and then weakening as it moves across South Korea. Here is that forecast track where it's 65 miles per hour. It doesn't take much to get back to typhoon strength but then weakening as it makes landfall here in the next 12 to 24 hours and then moves up into North Korea very quickly. Here's the next troublemaker, and this one I'm more concerned about for Japan, uh, very close to typhoon strength. Lan is the name of that storm, and the forecast track takes it right up into Honshu, perhaps close to Tokyo as a typhoon with winds somewhere between 85 and 100 miles per hour. I would not be shocked if it even got a little bit stronger. Here's Kanun right here. You can see it's got some disorganization to it, but it's still a well-defined system. Here's that track. Here's a look, though, at the next one, and you can see there's some wind shear to the north and east, but we've got a lot of moisture in the way here, and it is not going to be affected by Kanoon's outflow here. It's going to track east of that area, so it's got a favorable spot to go into Japan here as a typhoon, probably a Category 2, maybe even a chance that's a Category 3. And um, the average of all of the ensembles takes it very close to Tokyo here as a major typhoon. So it uh, could be severe here for Honshu in a few days. Um, not really a few days, but really towards this part next week. So got to catch my breath because there's just so much to look at here. My goal for you guys is just to look at some details in the shorter term. We can speculate about longer term, but right now I'm most concerned about the weather today into tomorrow in parts of the central and eastern US. I appreciate y'all's time. Tomorrow's video will focus on the Carolinas. We're also gonna take a look at the upper Midwest and look at the next system. And if you did enjoy this video and you're concerned about the weather coming up in the next few days, I urge you to subscribe. I do have a membership channel as well, $9.99 a month. I'm very busy. I'm not gonna really be able to, to answer a lot of questions, but if you are a paying subscriber, I will definitely respond and help you out with whatever you need it for. Um, I give all the glory to God who gives me the gift of being able to do this and has called me to share my faith with you. I realize I'm here talking about weather, but I can't do it without God who created me as a Christian man. And I do want to dedicate this video to a brother that we lost about a week ago, a member and, and deacon of our church, an elder uh, a guy named Ed uh, Woodhouse, and means a lot to me and my family. He's left a huge legacy behind, lived a very long, successful life, lived into his upper 80s. Um, we were at his celebration of life and it was a celebration it was not like any old funeral where you go and people are crying everybody was very much obviously sad to lose him but knowing that he's in a better place in heaven with jesus christ and there's a line of people up in heaven that are sitting there waiting to high five him which is really awesome ed was a wonderful brother the kind of man that you just had to meet um very strong in his faith and somebody who would go out of his way to call people on their birthday and leave them a message up until a few years ago. I, we, my wife and I have saved birthday songs from him and a wonderful singer and just somebody you just had to be around, a man who is strong in his faith. And I will say this to you, Ed, I will see you again, brother. I am looking forward to that one day when I get to meet my creator. Um, but 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Ed fought the good fight, and he finished his course. He definitely kept the faith through some difficult times. A very humble beginning on the Outer Banks to somebody who served at the state level, got into politics, and got to meet four U.S. presidents. Uh, and I have so much respect, not just for what he accomplished you know, in the world as somebody who became very successful and involved in leadership, but somebody who kept his faith and served the kingdom as a Christian man and who has a family with 
so many grandkids and great grandkids, many of whom would not understand and know Christ if not for Ed. So that man is a game changer. I'm going to miss him dearly. I'm kind of teared up thinking about it, but um, it's people like that, that if you have the ability to meet people like that in your life, they are a gift from God. And we are all a gift from God, but some people have not only fought that fight, but fought it a little bit harder. And I would say that was definitely the truth for Ed. So he leaves behind a wonderful wife and a wonderful family. And I'm just so blessed to be able to know them over the last 10 years of, of the course of my life. Uh, I would love to pray for Ed and his family, but if you all are going through things where you've lost loved ones recently, or you're dealing with health crises or anything else, please know that I'm here to pray for you. I'm here to do the weather, but I'm just a human like you are, and I want to pray for you and your family as well. I hope you have a blessed Wednesday, and we'll catch up again tomorrow morning. Take care.